Okay, so let's select our contract. So these are rescue contracts. And let's pick out who's going to be our first Kerbal to rescue. So we need to turn them on. Uh, let's see here. There we are. There they all are. <laughs> all four of them all in a train. And the easiest way, what altitudes are they in? 70, 85? They're all in around the 80, 75 to 80 something kilometer range. I think the best way to rescue them, these two are really close together. They might not be by the time we get up there, is start, you, I'll, we'll start with the person at the front and that is Dan P. So we're gonna rescue Dan P first. We're gonna set that person as a target. Dan P is in an orbit that's 81 by 73. I wish they were in a hot, you know what I think I'm gonna do? Because I think this will facilitate this and have this going. You always wanna go up into an orbit that's different than theirs, but with this being such a low orbit, there's not much room below the orbit and above the atmosphere. So what I think I shall do is go into a higher orbit, maybe around 120 meters or kilometers, and I'll launch ahead of them so that they will catch up to me. That's gonna be the plan. And I'm not as used to doing it this way, so hopefully I won't mess up. If I mess up, I will just switch to a different target. So I'm going to time warp till they're kind of a little bit behind me, right, right around here. I love this little chain of them. <laughs> so maybe around here-ish. No, right about there. Let's do it. Let's do this. So throttle, throttle. SAS on, throttle up, and uh, let's 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 punch this. Let's go. And this one's for real. Now, nice thing is if this does crash right now, it isn't a disaster, it's just a waste of money. Okay, so we'll get to about 50 meters per second. We'll knock it over about five degrees. And we'll lock that onto prograde. I'm assuming they're all in equatorial orbits. They certainly looked equatorial, though we'll go with that assumption. Okay, so I want this to be a heading of 90. That's looking all right. It's looking very good. And a little bit more in the north. Okay, uh, just about to lose the SRBs. There we go, again, maybe a smidge deep, but that's okay. That's okay. And like I said, this is now the real thing, no reverts or anything. This is if things go wrong, things go wrong. But at least no cripples are aboard this time. And right now I'm just letting, I'm just keeping it locked on the prograde vector. I'm going to knock the throttle down because I noticed that my time to apoapsis was about 55 seconds. I want to like to keep it around there. And uh, yeah, I'm just letting it ride up that prograde vector. I get a lot of comments, especially in my one video about getting to orbit, um, of people with rockets flipping out and they don't understand what's going on. I honestly think, like, if you build something with big tail fins on the back like this and it's still flipping out, it's probably, I would have to guess, because you're getting too far from this prograde vector. Like, don't, you know, keep yourself, it's, even if you need to adjust your, your ascent, keep yourself very close to that prograde vector. Right now, I'm not even touching WASD. And just let it ride it up. A little bit more throttle. Let's drop down to 53 seconds. Okay, that's that, 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 yep. Again, I'll wait till I'm at 50 kilometers and then we'll lose this fairing. And that's action group number five. There we go. And now we'll put some... That was kind of violent. <laughs> I wonder if I need to... No, I don't want to turn the thrust down on the, the top dude. That worked better. Alright. Put the lights on. Get a good look at the lights in just a little bit. But right now we are about to lose our core booster here. 
And then it'll just be on that Pug and Ant engines. But not for very long. I don't know why that's a delay on there. Oh, we're going to 120 kilometers, that's right. I've forgotten. We want to go up to 120 kilometers on the Apoapsis, that's our target. We're just passing 80 kilometers right now. I don't think this is a bad looking thing. Kind of cute. See what it's like once it's uh, on the, um, what was I going to say, on the, uh, in the dark side. See what the lights are like, if the lights are helping at all. I find the KSP lights aren't very bright. I wish they were a little brighter. Alright, 100 kilometers on the Apple Apoapsis. Like I said, we're going right up to 120. We are already in space by a bit. Okay, there we go, 120. Here we are. Uh, where are all the lights? Here are those blinky... Oh, I meant to make this guy a strobe, didn't I? Blink on. There we go. It's my approximation of a strobe. Eh, it's not. I kind of... It's functional. I think it's better looking than the craft Val had to fly. Val is in the hospital bed wa watching this on TV going, Oh my god, why couldn't I fly something like that? Though again, if this landed in the mountains, it might have been even worse. Okay, uh, we're coming up towards Apoapsis. Oh wow, this is... Uh, you know what, let's just circularize at Apoapsis. We'll worry about the rendezvous later. Let's, let's just circularize. And then we'll judge where we're at when in relation to Dan P. Okay. Now our periapsis is already at minus 22 kilometers, so it's almost out of the surface already, so this isn't going to take too much. I am super pleased with this vessel. This should be pretty good. I might I might just kind of stick with this for a little bit and just kind of modify things slightly but as far as just doing what's needed in low orbit about Kerbin for the next little while I think this is going to be a good again we're going to 120 on that periapsis that's good enough okay put you onto the normal vector just for those solar panels Electric charge says perpetual, but the fuel cell should be off. It's down here, yeah. Fuel cell is off, so make sure that stays off. That's only to come on in emergency circumstances. All right. Okay, let's see our situation here with Dan. So, make a maneuver. We need to come back down. It is a little less efficient to do the rendezvous this way where you go up and then come back down because clearly I put a lot of energy to get into this higher orbit and now I'm just coming back down again. But I just think it'll facilitate this, make this go a little bit quicker. Okay. So I'm going to keep going down until I see two of these and then I want to go up until one of them disappears and I can see I need to be a little bit more forward in time which is good it's better than the other way around where you launch too late <laughs> oh my gosh I gotta take can I turn these off there there's just too many things to see <laughs> okay let's select this again where is that there we go 30 kilometers okay let's start playing around with this Okay, and a little bit more on the prograde front. Until, oh wait, retrograde. I'm going the other way. Oh, silly. Retrograde until I get the double encounters. The purple ones too. Come on, where is it? There they are. And then go to they just disappear. And now again playing with the timing. Other way. More retrograde. Back again. 
play with the timing some more. All right, I'm probably starting to play around a little bit too much. Let's just adjust the timing and be done with this. Okay, 1.6 kilometer separation. It's, it ain't bad, it'll do. Okay, let's view. Let's go get Dan here. So uh, yeah, let's warp to this maneuver. It's only 15 minutes away. There, now we can see it in the nighttime. We better put this onto the prograde vector. Yeah, it's all right. Oh wait, retrograde vector. Oh my gosh, I'm so used to going rendezvous where I uh, come in from below instead of coming in from above. Retrograde is the way we're going. There we go. Okay, and what I like to do is stay out of uh, out of map view. I like to stay out of map view as much as I can. And over here, if you click on the approach indicators, um, you get approach data for your target. We got nothing now because we're not intersecting with his orbit, but we will be very, very soon. It's only a three second burn, so I'm gonna start to burn early, go to maybe about a third of a throttle. Here, like about here. And we should be starting to see some intersect data. There we go. And then I'm just looking and I just want to get that encounter as close as I can. There, it started to creep back up again, so I, I stopped my burn. But we're coming in 1.7 kilometers. So, I don't know. You can do. I love doing as much as you can from map view. I find it just much... Or not map view, the opposite of map view. <laughs> Staying out of map view. Oh, whoa, 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 come back. I had it still locked on the retrograde vector. Come on. Uh, maybe some additional reaction wheels wouldn't be bad. It's a little sluggish. It gets the job done. Okay, we're 15 minutes away, so let's time warp. We rotate a little bit so we get a little bit better exposure on those panels. That's better. Now it's all perpetuals. Okay. Let's get over there. 12 minutes. I'm just watching my time to approach. We'll stop a few minutes early there we go that's on target so let's it switch to target here automatically let's uh, put it on the retrograde target icon and we should see there there he is way below us way below us there we'll see if we can close this approach here and burn a little bit in this direction here and I just want to watch this number there it is it's coming down We're a kilometer separation now. Oh, it started to creep back up, so I stopped. Let's go look to see what's going on. Yeah, I need to push this a little bit more towards it, towards the purple target icon. A little more like this kind of a thing. Let's see what that does for us. Yep, yeah, that's bringing the closest approach distance down. Just keep going, and as long as keep going down, I'll keep burning in this direction. Under half a kilometer now. Oh, and it was starting to stall out. 343 meters. We can now get ourselves a lot closer. You do want to sort of make those adjustments a little bit ahead of time, not at the last moment, because they're much more expensive in the last moment, though this thing has so much delta V, it's not going to be an issue. We found Dan P. She's still alive. Oh, no more electric charge on Dan P. Oh, dear. Uh, that's... Okay. There's no more water on Dan P's shipwreck. No more oxygen. Oh, come on, Kerbalism. You had to have given them resources, didn't you? Oh, no. <laughs> no I'm getting relaxed. Okay, so... Oh, shoot. I'm still stuck on retrograde. Stop it there. Okay, Relax. Damn P is fine. Damn P is fine. Okay, let's push this towards the target here. Damn P is starting to come into visual range. I can see the little dot there. 
coming within 27 meters. Oh, Luke is asking, what's the specs on my PC? I would have to look them up. Ask me in the comments or in the Discord. I am really terrible with all that kind of stuff, just remembering them. Remembering numbers and, and all of that. Oh, I best start slowing down here. We're only 25 seconds away. Push that right on it. There we go. Okay. And we are about to meet Dan P. We'll find out what class Dan P is too. Let's slow right down. All right, down to just 0.4 meters per second. Let's just sort of finish this off here. Oh wait, I gotta be careful here with ignitions. I gotta remember that. I'm so used to maybe putting more ignitions on that wouldn't be a bad idea. It's only down to eight ignitions now. Remember, I do have the ant engine, so if it gets worse, um, you know, if that one fails, I still got the ant engines. But maybe a good thing to do would be to upgrade this engine. All right, I'm gonna turn the hatches towards Dan B or Dan P. I'm sorry. Whoops. That's why it's nice to put these blue lights near where the hatches are, especially in this pod where it's easy to forget where the hatch is. We'll switch on over. There she is, and Dan P is a scientist. Excellent. Okay, and what's really nice is even though it's this kind of pod, Kerbalism for this puts in a monopropellant for it, even though this kind of pod normally doesn't because if it didn't have monopropellant, um... Dan P would have no way to EVA over, or at least it would be significantly harder, but we do have the requisite one. Let's get over there. Let's change our view here a bit. Put the lights on. Whoa! There we go. And Dan's going to take the up, right side up capsule. That's the privilege of being here first. <laughs> All right, so now that that is done, we have Dan P aboard. We still have to get her down to the surface. We also need now get our next Kerbal. And so let's put back on all of our... There we are. So this is us. This is our next Kerbal. That's going to be our next target. It's best to sort of make your way backwards, as you'll see in just a little bit. So let's set that as a target. And what I should be able to do, all I need to do is slow myself down. And for those people that are new to the game, the way I, what I don't want to do is just point myself that way and uh, burn towards them. That would end up being very, very difficult. It's much easier. I'll do it with a maneuver, though. You can do this without a maneuver. Set up a maneuver. Um, look at the encounter indicators. Now I'm going to start giving myself some prograde. And as I do prograde, I should be increasing my apoapsis, right? Yep. And that should be slowing myself down. What? Yep. There they come. And you can see these close encounter indicators coming. And I'm looking now at the purple ones. Okay, I overdid it just a little bit. So we'll come back a little. And there we go, there's our encounter, 0.2 kilometers separation here. And so what we're doing is we're going into this slightly higher orbit, which is slowing us down. And by the time we get back to here, we slow down enough that we'll be rendezvousing with Rob DV right there. Now, one thing you do want to be a little bit careful of if you're doing this yourself, pay attention to how much you're burning here. It's about 51 meters per second. That's about as much as you're gonna burn at the rendezvous end of it as well. So this is gonna cost me about 102 meters per second. I can easily afford it, but you know, you do wanna kind of pay attention to that. So let's put ourselves just simply on the prograde vector. Get ready for this burn. Oh, I'm still on target, orbit. I'm missing the burn, but that's not a big deal. This isn't actually too... In fact, what I can do is simply take this away. 
and just start burning prograde and just watch those close encounter indicators as I burn prograde. I didn't need the maneuver. Here they come. There. And just sort of watch them there. There they are. And just keep it locked on prograde. A little bit more. Okay, slow down. And at about 0.8, I should be able to get that. There we go. Oh, 0.5 kilometers right there. See, you don't even need the maneuver node to do this. Back on to normal vector for those solar panels. And we're going to be meeting up in about 15 and a half minutes. And of course, although we have tons and tons of fuel, we are running out of cabin space. So that is, oh, I'm still locked on prograde, silly. That is going to be the limiting factor here. All right, let's get to them. So we're gonna have to do the better part of an orbit. Go a little faster. Oh, I think he just went below us there. Okay, put this back on target. Retrograde. Oh, I can see we're quite a ways off here. Let's I'll let myself get. Wait a minute. What is going on? Oh, I'm on. Ah, silly Billy. It switched to periapsis and apoapsis. Oh, we're still 14 minutes away. Okay, let's get closer. <laughs> I was a little bit confused there. Because it could have been worse. I could have blown right by it. I had it on the wrong tab. Okay, again, we'll stop a few minutes before so that if we, in case we need to make some adjustments, though, we are coming in pretty good here. Am I still time warping? Oh, retrograde, there we go. I can see it below me. It's in the clouds if you can see the waypoint. Rob DV's shipwreck. Um, these things, people were asking lack of heat shield. Um, these don't need these have a blader all the way around them. I don't need the heat shield. I do agree that um, you can actually deorbit without a heat shield, and and it's pretty much fine. I I, I kind of don't like doing that. All right. Pushing that towards there a little bit. Close this gap a little more. You know, I think I'm only going to do one of these rendezvous this stream. I'll get something else to do after this is done. And then we'll rescue the other two next episode. Because these take a long time doing these rendezvous. Oh, oh, we found Rob DV. He's alive. Now I'm sure we're going to get all those danger warnings. But remember last time they all went away. Whoops. We're, getting in, we're coming in real fast. Look how fast I'm going. What am I... Don't go so fast. Stop. My air. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I actually blew away. Silly. I panicked. I panicked. Why aren't you spinning around? Am I still time warping? No. Oh, I need to go this way. Yep. I overcooked that. I just panicked. All of a sudden I realized I was only like 10 or 15 seconds away from approach and I hit the thrusters. And uh, I actually overdid it. So let's fix that. <gasps> Okay, let's spin around again. Man, how many ignitions are left on this? I'm definitely going to upgrade that. Oh, one ignition left on that pug engine. Good thing I have those backup engines. It is a good thing.
All right, so we're going to do this a little more sanely this time. <laughs> okay, let's bring ourselves to a relative stop. I saw a warning. I didn't know what that was. What's the warning? Oh, this is a beautiful stop. Look at that. A little bit embarrassing there at the end, but... Oh, I think my engine just failed. That was that warning. See that? My pug engine's failing. Now, um, now there's a park job. I'm sorry. I'm proud of that. But when it's yellow, that means it can be repaired by a Kerbal. So maybe we can get Dan here to do a bit of a fix. What class is Dan? Dan is a pilot, but I don't know. I don't know if they need to be an engineer or not. Let's find out. So we're going to do an EVA. Let's go down and take a look at that engine. See if Dan can do anything about this. Service the engine. Ah! Engine is repaired. A power kick did the trick. So there we go. Nicey nice. Now Dan has to go in the upper upside down capsule. Which is going to be fun for him on re-entry. He gets to hang upside down while in on re-entry. What I think is affectionately referred to as the eyes out orientation. <laughs> and we got our pug back. Our pug now has 20 ignitions. I still think it's better for me to upgrade this pug though. I think that'd be a good idea. Okay, so we need to get ourselves down to the surface to complete these two contracts. Let's again turn everything off. Oh wait, can I un... ah, uh, whatever. Um, where is the Kerbal Space Center? Right here. I'm noticing my electric charge is not doing the bestest. Oh, that's because the sun almost has gone down. Let's just do some solar panel fixing here for a bit. That's good. Now it's back to perpetual again. Alright, let's get these folks down to the surface. So... Where is the... Oh, let's put on... There. And I'm going to try and do a better job and not put them into the mountains this time. So I'm going to time warp until we're underneath where the Woomerang launch site. Uh, pug batteries are almost empty? Oh, really? Okay, we're going to be in the sun in a moment. I didn't realize the batteries were as low as they were. Batteries are empty. Life support systems are off, but... Batteries are back on again. Let's just make sure our scrubbers are okay. Uh, maybe some more batteries might not be a bad plan. Or paying more attention might be better. Let's see. Our, scr our scrubbers are running again. Good, good, good. Oh, I could have run the fuel cell. That's what the fuel cell is there for, but I knew the sun was coming up. Okay, we are going to put this on orbit. Put this on retrograde. We're going to make sure that I'm not going to drive into Dan's debris. We are not. I always want to check that. And I'm going to make sure that our X from trajectories is well, well into the ocean here. Are we? Oh, here we are. Yep. Okay, now we should be start. Whoa, here it comes. And right about there. That should be good. This should be safe. Now, we are... This prediction by the trajectories mod is a bit off. We will be coming short of this. Uh, and the reason is, is because we're going to be shedding this little service module bit. But what we're shedding is not that much mass. So it shouldn't be off too much. But I'm going to put myself again onto this normal vector. Um, how are our batteries doing? I want to charge those batteries right up. Are they charged right? They are not. Okay. I might run that fuel cell for a bit too. Point those solar panels at the sun. Maybe electrically there should be can be some improvements that can be made. Let's turn on that fuel cell. That's here, and monoprop fuel cell. I want to get as much electricity going as I can. How's that? That's charging up a little better now. Yeah, maybe some batteries is a good idea. But anyway, 
They'll be fine. I think I've said that before, though. Batteries are recharged. Are they all recharged? No, they're not recharged, recharged, but they're doing fine. Okay. Just hitting the atmosphere, so let's do that. On to the retrograde vector. How much electricity do we got left? Oh, we still have the power. We're fine. Electricity is still perpetual. Okay, here we go. And I heard the thing, wait, did he name them after you guys? I am naming them after my patrons. So the first four are my first four patrons, some of which are in the chat right now. And I will continue to name new Kerbals after my patrons, working my way down the list in the order in which they joined. I think that's the fairest way to do it. All right, and this is looking, where's our trajectories prediction? See, our trajectories pr prediction's a little short from where it was before. But there's a lot of ocean here to aim for. So I need to not be as frivolous as I was. We're coming over the mountains that uh, did Valentina in last time. So <laughs> at least going into the mountains isn't going to be an issue. And Dan and Rob seem to be having a very good time. Yep. James is mentioning that I disabled the staging so that this base stayed on here because if I ever put this down on the surface, it'd be nice for the bottom of this not to be rolly and oh, we are getting into some tumbling happening here. Okay. Okay. Um Jeez, that's not encouraging. I don't want this probe core. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. All right, so improvements can be made. <laughs> If this probe core ever overheated and broke, I mean, this pod's okay. It's got parachutes on it, but this pod would be in a lot of trouble. Oh, I guess that's when you bail and you use their parachutes. That's why I'm going to always not take those parachutes off. All right. We are still on four times speed and everything seems to be okay, I think. There are improvements to be made here. I gotta think about what said improvements should be. But for now, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm gonna tuck these parachutes down a little bit too. I don't like this gap between that's in here. So I wanna upgrade the pug engine. I definitely wanna do that. Uh, Moon R4B batteries are almost empty, shutting down. The Moon R4B is the is a probe sitting on the surface of the moon. Um, that's not too exciting, but probably it is in the depths of that lunar night. All right, we are just about there. I think we managed to do this. Reasonably okay. All right, let's recover. 